Welcome back, everyone. Let us now move on to the next session of the day entitled My Digital, Settling, Setting the Stage for Digitonomics. Moderating this session, join me in welcome back one last time, Raymond Siva, Senior Vice President, Investment and Brand, Chief Marketing Officer of Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, and that in a discussion on the My Digital Initiative, setting out to various measures and targets that will be implemented in three phases until 2030. This I pass over to you, Raymond. Good morning and thank you again, Hasro. We are now at the, really the final lap to close off Malaysia Tech Month. It will be Merdeka for me uh, after this, after 30 days. Uh, and I'm really uh, excited uh, and happy to close off today with this distinguished and esteemed panel that has made their time despite whatever is going on at the top of the house in the country, to be with us here today to talk about My Digital, the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint that was just recently launched uh, by the Prime Minister of Malaysia, right? So this entire 30 days uh, that we've been, you know, uh, what do you say, kupas, yeah? peeling off uh, the intricacies or, or the, the content around the digital industry in, in Malaysia and the digital ecosystem all boils down to what we have now in My Digital. Right? And really it's an initiative with six thrusts that sets out the measures and targets that will be implemented in three phases until 2030. Right? The initiative which uh, really is the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint uh, complements the national development policies such as the currently ongoing uh, 12th Malaysia plan uh, cycle, the shared prosperity vision, uh, vision or Wawasan Kermak Murang Bersama 2030, uh, and the recently also announced fourth IR policy, right? So it is really important that we understand that my digital is really the blueprint for us to become a leading digital nation and to really firmly establish Malaysia as the heart of digital ASEAN. So with me, if I may very quickly announce the panelists with me who would help us understand what my digital is and how we're we moving forward to become a digital nation. Please uh, welcome Yang Rusa. Tuan Simonesan Marimutu, who is the Deputy Secretary General, Telecommunications Infrastructure and the Digital Economy Sector from the Ministry of Communications and Multimedia Malaysia. Yang uh, Tuan Simonesan is currently serving as the TKSU, like I said earlier on, the Deputy Secretary General of the Communications and Multimedia Ministry of Malaysia. His job scope includes overseeing the planning, coordination, implementing and monitoring of communications and digital economy policies investment and digitalization activities, as well as the implementation of licensing and communications infrastructure projects to ensure equal and more economical access to communication services across the country. He has vast experience in the field of public finance, especially in tax policies, having come from the Ministry of Finance in both direct and indirect taxes. Uh, one of his biggest achievements is the implementation of the sales tax and service tax, uh, which was introduced to replace the GST. Next, we have Yang Bahagia, Dr. Suhana uh, Bidimo Saleh, who's the director of Bahagian K Economy, the K Economy Division in the EPU, the Economic Planning Unit of the Prime Minister's Department. Uh, Dr. Dr. Su started a career as a diplomatic and administrative officer in 1995 and was posted to the distribution section of the EPU. Since then, she has served in various divisions, especially social services, agriculture, regional development, and a strategic planning and international cooperation. The expertise is really in policy planning and development project management related to poverty eradication, equity ownership, social development, international cooperation, and digitalization. In June 2020, uh, she was appointed as a director of the K Economy Division, among others, to oversee the development and growth of the ICT sector digital economy delivery system. And her responsibilities include preparation of the two chapters in the 12 Malaysia Plan and the Malaysia Economy uh, Digital Blueprint. She has a PhD in economics from the Victoria University in Melbourne, Australia, and a master's degree from the Hiroshima University in Japan. And finally, we have J. Fabian Bigger, the CEO of My Digital, the Strategic Change Management Office in the Economic Planning Unit. Fabian was appointed the CEO of My Digital in 19 April 2021 and is tasked to drive the change management and ensure the successful delivery of the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint. His experience in delivery units include the Performance Management and Delivery Unit for Mandu, 
uh, and the uh, uh, before that actually had a short stint at the Presidential Delivery Bureau of the Republic of Tanzania to assist in the big results now 2025 project. He has a BSc from Case Western Reserve University and his master's in public policy from the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies in Japan. Thank you so much for joining us. That was a bit of a mouthful to introduce all of you, but really shows the depth of the experience of the panelists that we have here today. Tuan Siva, I'm going to jump straight into it, right? We have these policies that have just been announced. From a KKMM perspective, from the ministry perspective, Tuan Siva, can you share with us what is the view of getting Malaysia, fully Malaysians, into the digital economy? Do we have to do it now and how fast do we have to do it, sir? Thank you very much uh, for inviting me, inviting me to be a panelist on this uh, uh, Malaysia Tech Month uh, closing session. Uh, so first, uh, before I go into your answering your question, let me uh, congratulate MDEC uh, for one, uh, successfully organizing this Malaysia Tech Month program. Uh, where we have come to the end and, and I've got a lot of uh, positive feedback uh, that this has been a very su successful event and, and we have got more than 10,000 uh, uh, followers or, or participants around the world uh, following our event. And, and at the same time, I also like to congratulate MDEC for being a, a lead agency in promoting uh, e-commerce, digitalization and so on uh, from 1996 and I have been with the MDEC journey. Uh, so it, it is my, uh, very close to my heart as well. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Raymond, as you were asking uh, the, the KKMM's uh, uh, point of view in terms of whether uh, my digitalization, uh, the digitalization process uh, that we are undertaking now is right on time or it can wait. Definitely there's something which we cannot wait, wait and it, it should happen yesterday actually. You know, uh, so uh, it, it's, it's a game uh, where we are uh, chasing each other to be in the forefront. So as you know, uh, uh, KKMM has been entrusted uh, one of the, the important role of ensuring uh, the, the, the connectivity uh, as the fundamental or, or key area to ensure the success of uh, my digital or the, the whole uh, nationwide digitalization uh, process. And, and we have a very important role to play here and we cannot afford to delay this. And, and by having this my digital plan uh, uh, framework, uh, we make sure that, you know, uh, it is done in a very planned and uh, uh, very structured way. We have targets to meet and, and uh, our expectation is that in the next one or two years, we will have a very good connectivity to ensure that all the plan or the programs under the uh, My Digital will be smooth sailing to ensure that everyone is connected and so on. Uh, besides that, as you're, you're fully aware, uh, KKMM has another role in terms of uh, facilitating the adoption of e-commerce and so on, uh, digital uh, marketing and, and things like that. So uh, we are actively pursuing on this. And, and I think if we uh, do not embark on this on an exped expedited manner, uh, we, we have a tendency to be uh, left behind. Uh, this is a process that we cannot wait and it must happen today. And I think uh, my digital is right there to ensure that uh, this uh, programs that we have in place is executed in a, in a right and uh, uh, very clear and uh, without overlapping functions and so on. So I, I think that's, I'll stop here for now. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Su, I just want to, before we delve into the main questions, just want to get also your view uh, in terms of the objectives behind my digital and, and the six thrusts. If you can talk to us very quickly, about the six trusts and, and the, really the objectives of my digital. I think it would be very helpful for us to understand this, uh, Dr. Su. Uh, thank you, Raymond. I think first, before uh, I begin, and I also like to congratulate MDEC for the 25th anniversary and also for invitation to EPU to uh, kind of share our thoughts in this. Um, actually, my digital is the big uh, agenda a big initiative <clears throat> and under that we have the blueprint so uh, it's beyond blueprint but I think basically uh, because the blueprint is launched in uh, February this year so uh, and also the 4R uh, policy then I think the most, most of the discussions around that um, as you know that the presence of digital economy digital technology uh, for our technology 
it is in a way um, it's something that we need to embrace. Uh, we need to adopt. Of course, this is no longer an option. It is uh, going digital is no longer an option. It is a default. So everybody is moving towards that. And at the national level, international level, the our kind of other countries is going towards that way. And there's a, a move for Malaysia to uh, kind of be, I mean, have a strategy to guide the, the, the nation forward in uh, pursuing digitalization and digital economy. Uh, the, we started last year uh, when we have the study. During that time, I think that there's quite a lot of answer. I mean, we are not sure the type of readiness Malaysia uh, in, I mean, in terms of digital digitalization, digital economy, where Malaysia are, are we doing, uh, I mean, there's enough, uh, there's not enough information that during that time. But when we start the, the journey towards uh, you know, uh, formulating the blueprint, we, that we found that quite a lot of things have been done, only that uh, it's not uh, kind of very integrated. Uh, through the discussion, we, um, we kind of identify six uh, key issues. I think one is on the, the need to have a digital first mindset uh, and then the, uh, higher technology adoption across the public sector. This is among, one of the crucial things because uh, the public sector is uh, kind of quite leads all the government services. Then we need to have a digital uh, first mindset, not only in the government, but for everybody. And then there's a need to have a supportive ecosystem for the enterprises to go digitalize. <clears throat> that means the companies, we, we have to create the ecosystem for them to uh, adopt you know, uh, digitalization. And the need to nurture a future ready workforce, like you said, uh, 4R is a disruptive technology, then we need to have a workforce that uh, can embrace the technology. Because uh, when we move towards automation, there will be uh, some jobs that will be displaced. And this, uh, the, this uh, workers need to be retrained so that they can you know, have a presence in the digital economy. Uh, then we, the digital divide uh, among income and age groups. We also noticed that uh, not only, you know, uh, you, you can see in Malaysia, there's quite a lot of, uh, that we still have, uh, struggle with uh, digital divide, uh, digital, I not only, div I mean, in terms of digital, but in terms of uh, uh, kind of uh, imbalances. Uh, in economics and also in terms of groups. So in terms of uh, providing uh, the digital, di uh, I mean, digitization, it should uh, covers everybody. I mean, uh, the B40s, the M20, M40s and T20s. And then the need to, for a better develop, uh, deployment of quality broadband infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure is, uh, like Mr. Siva said, is very crucial because that will be the core. Uh, we need that infrastructure to that uh, to deliver to 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 access the services, and the need to build trust. Uh, the last issue is on challenges is to the need to build trust and ethics in using data and technology, as well as increasing the the awareness of cybersecurity. These challenges uh, form the base for the six trust. Uh, if I can just uh, highlight a bit on the trust. Uh, trust one is that we want to drive digital transformation in the public sector. The trust two is to boost economic competitiveness through digitalization. Trust three is build enabling uh, digital infrastructure. Trust four, build agile and competent uh, digital talent. Trust five, create an inclusive digital society. And trust six, uh, build trusted, secure, and ethical digital environment. Uh, as you know that, uh, you know, Malaysia, uh, when we, uh, I mean, for the, during the pandemic, we can see that uh, we need to really embark on and adopt the uh, digitalization. And through that, uh, we can see that uh, uh, it kind of uh, far hasten, hastens the, uh, the speed of digitalization. And with the blueprint, we can see that, you know, things are mo moving quite uh, in a good direction. Because I think last year, uh, when we started, it's not uh, so much hype, but now I think everybody, I think if nearly every day also, there will be some sort of seminar on uh, digital economy. So I, I'm happy that the, the people, are, I mean, the, the rakyat is uh, taking on board on this. And uh, the, this is the policy that the government is pursuing at the moment. We, and the engagement that we have with all the, uh, the people outside is, and the industry is something that uh, we look at as a, uh, and then the policy is agile. That means we, we keep 
we can you know at enhance and we can um, I mean uh, it shouldn't be static it should be dynamic I think that's uh, basically why I think we need to really uh, the government really want to uh, pursue or really push for this policy right. I think that's uh, basically the introduction for the six trust uh, uh, Raymond I think I leave it at that thank you very good, very, very good uh, uh, introduction there, uh, Dr. Zhu. Uh, Fabian, I just want to come to you then. Uh, Tuan Siva has set the stage saying that we have to do it yesterday, right? Uh, we, we have to hasten it. And uh, Dr. Dr. Su has clearly put it, uh, clearly the six trust in how we want to deliver this. And so Fabian, I'm looking at you to explain perhaps to all of us here, what is the role of the SCMO uh, in this space and how are you going to carry forward uh, the execution of the blueprint? Okay. Thank you. Um, um, like, like the others before me, I like to echo uh, the sentiments about you know uh, congratulating MDI for this month, and as well as uh, you know thanking you again to invite us. Uh, actually, we are also part with EPU, so uh, two EPU folks here uh, versus one uh, uh, from KKMM, and <laughs> Mr. Siva. Okay, uh, the SCMO actually, uh, if you look at it, uh, it's a to put it short, it's a delivery unit, yes. Uh, we also the secretary to the uh, Council of uh, uh, National Digital Economy and for our council that is chaired by the Prime Minister. Uh, being at the secretary, actually, we can, uh, you know, we can have a good view of the progress and the issues that are faced by the various uh, implementing agencies. Uh, of course, uh, being the delivery unit, we have to track the progress at all times and build up programs that in ensure that we can track them as well as to intervene and solve a problem solve, you know, when there are issues. Because as you know, interagency uh, collaboration, usually you will have, you find some, uh, you know, some kinks and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, issues that you need to resolve. And we also identify best practices out there. And we actually uh, initiate a lot of dialogue with the private sector and uh, the, the, uh, the other parties private sector, the community, as well as state government, because as you know, some of the state government, they embarked on this quite some time ago, you know, for example, Sarawak, uh, police, there are various levels of uh, what you call it, uh, progress. So we would like to also align them with the national, uh, you know, uh, national uh, initiative, as well as uh, to learn from them, because some of them probably have done things that we have not imagined. Like for example, police, they, they've even gone one step, uh, you know, to look at uh, how how to um, manage uh, re religious related issues through through uh, digital uh, solutions, so and and on top of that, there's also the awareness awareness uh, program because uh, we look at it. Uh, this is something that we are working on. Uh, uh, not not that great yet, but uh, it's about publicity. You know whether it's public awareness or even within the civil service about this. So we're working on that. Um, in a nutshell, that's what we do to bring our awareness as well as to make sure that the uh, implementation of the blueprint is actually successful in the end. Because uh, we are not the implementing agency, yeah? because like MDAG, you guys are, uh, KKMM, you guys are, you know, but we actually sort of, uh, you know, ensure that everything goes smoothly in between the agencies as well, together with the private sector and the other uh, sections of the community. Thank you, Fabian. So th that's a really interesting point because you know, in, in, in the in the time that I've been, uh, you know, with, with KKMM and with MDEC, uh, you know, a lot of uh, feedback that I get, firstly from the media and recently also from the investors, is that uh, there's so many agencies, so many agencies, and, and everybody's making a grab to do something around around digital, right? Uh, and it's not it's not bad because you know it just shows that across the government sector, across the country, everybody's moving to digital, right? But to that point, uh, Mr. Siva, I need to come to you and say. You know, fundamentally, fundamentally, digital and technology is an enabler to better lives. Uh, you know, uh, access to education and so on. So, according to the Mastercard Fletcher School of Digital Evolution Index, there have been huge gaps in digital capabilities and readiness between the different ASEAN countries, and and, and that's to be expected. Yeah, uh, what is Malaysia's position in this? Given the fact that one of the key initiatives of My Digital is like we heard from Dr. Su just now, is you know, capacity and capability building via connectivity. What's your take on that, Mr. Uh, okay, uh, ASEAN has grown to become the uh, fifth largest economy in the world, uh, with a combined uh, GDP of almost uh, USD 3 billion. 
Uh, Malaysia as a member of ASEAN uh, have always been supportive of various initiatives that is uh, being done to propel ASEAN's digital capability and overcome certain gaps. Uh, as you know, uh, by doing so, uh, tap on each other's strength. Uh, ASEAN realized the importance of accelerating the adoption of digital transformation to depart from uh, COVID-19 crisis earlier uh, to recover our economies. Uh, the first AS ASEAN uh, Digital Ministers Meeting, uh, which was held earlier this year sometime in January, adopted the ASEAN Digital Master Plan 2025. Uh, to guide ASEAN's digital cooperation from uh, 2021 to 2025. So th there is a plan already set uh, within the ASEAN members on uh, improving uh, the relationship uh, and also uh, action plans within ASEAN countries and, and particularly to address the, the issue that, uh, that you raised, which is about the digital gap uh, between the ASEAN countries. So uh, the master plan aims at prioritizing ASEAN's recovery from COVID-19, connect businesses, uh, facilitate cross-border trade and build a digitally inclusive society, uh, which I think uh, is the, the important thing uh, to ensure that ASEAN as a, as a community uh, grow equally in terms of uh, digitally enabled society. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, uh, we also talk about uh, technologies and ecosystem uh, within ASEAN. Additionally, uh, the ASEAN-China Digital Economy Partnership uh, among corporations being established uh, to focus on sharing on technology and capacity building in areas such as uh, digital technology in pandemic prevention and control, uh, 5G use cases, artificial intelligence and industrial digital transformation. Uh, ASEAN look forward on such cooperatives and partnerships that we believe uh, will assist and support the different levels of digital readiness among ASEAN members and strengthen uh, the block as a unit. Uh, domestically, uh, Raymond, uh, Malaysia through the My Digital uh, Executing Initiative that focuses on building, enabling digital ecosystem as a whole uh, that will entail developing digital savvy workforce, bridging digital gap, uh, improves infrastructure and creating business friendly investment ecosystem and digitalized business. So I think uh, that covers uh, basically uh, when we talk about the, the digital preparedness and uh, connectivity within ASEAN. So I think that, that what, what you said just now was, was really very important because, you know, we, we're not looking at Malaysia, uh, uh, 30 million population, 32 million population, in, you know, uh, alone, but in the context of a growing, you know, almost 700 million population to come. Uh, and, and that's really, you know, about 5% of the ASEAN population. So there's really, I think, a need to also understand where digital is moving in the, in the ASEAN countries so that we're able to also get, stay ahead of the curve, right? Dr. Su, I want to come to you uh, on, on the next one, which is, you know, so we've launched the Wawasan Kemakmuran Bersama, uh, which has the KGAS in there. And, and the KGAS in there, you know, the, the top five KGAS has clear mention about digital already, right? And then Barbaruni, you know, we, we have uh, the My Digital Blueprint, which we rightly pointed out, the six trust, and then we have the National Fourth IR Policy, right? All within the RMK 12 planning cycle, yeah? So a uh, question to you, uh, Dr. Su. Uh, the, the My Digital really complements the development policies, as I said earlier on. Um, but how does it really complement each other from an EPU perspective? Jadi, kalau investor, if the investors are looking from the outside in, there's so many of this. How do we make sense of this, uh, Dr. Su? And, and really, what is most important from all of this? Yeah. Okay. Um, if I mean, basically for policies, I think uh, our mission government policies is always aligned to, with each other. Uh, the digital economy approach is for 10 years. I mean, uh, from two. 2021 to 2030, and uh, the it will cover two Malaysia plan. I mean, that will be the 12 Malaysia plan and the 13 Malaysia plan. So when we have just to kind of uh, give a brief uh, idea on how it works, uh, we have the blueprint for 10 years, and we have two uh, Malaysia plan. Uh, so we identify a, a strategy in the uh, in the uh, blueprint. Then uh, I say, I mean, I say gender is easier to relate. Uh, we identify general to uh, to enhance the connectivity, and in the twelve plan, we also mentioned on the need for uh, better connectivity, and we also align that with the projects that uh, for the twelve Malaysia plan. So there will be some funding to support that program. As for like others, like in education, we say there's a device uh, for students. And also that uh, in terms of connectivity, that means uh, we need to connect the, to the schools. Uh, there's also uh, mentioned 
uh, in that will come into various chapters, uh, maybe in human capital and also in the digitization chapter. And uh, through the projects also, we have a projects that support that. Uh, but basically, the blueprint is not uh, all in. I mean, from the government, one of the uh, in, in one of the, the engagement. I mean, we already promote the PPPP, the four people, public and private partnership. Usually, we have the public private partnership, but now we have the people because uh, in digitization, I see many devices. It also uh, will uh, we encourage uh, other CSOs and all that to come in because. If government, uh, one, I mean, we have limited uh, fundings to kind of give devices to every student, mm -hmm. but there are also uh, efforts by other CSOs and all that to also provide such devices to the to the to the, the students. Uh, as of uh, the four R policy, we are kind of said that is uh, uh, that is based on society. So all our policies uh, basically. Uh, towards the well-being, the inclusiveness, and the sustainability of certain projects, and and like uh, I mean, we, when we align it, it's not only internal, but also at, at the external level. So we also align to the SDG. We have under the SDG, no one is left behind, all that. So uh, because it is uh, when we have this alignment, it is more structured and coordinated. Uh, because in a way, in a, at the end, uh, the common goal is to achieve an inclusive, responsible, and sustainable social economic development uh, in terms of environment, in terms of well-being and all that. So it is something that uh, when we have any type of uh, kind of any, I mean, agenda at international or local level, we need to, uh, domestic level, we need to align all that. And um, for the blueprint, uh, because we have uh, faces, right, we have the uh, phase one is from 2021 to 2022, basically to accelerate the adoption to strengthening the digital foundation. So you can see that uh, this is where we, we talk about connectivity. And even on the cashless initiative, we said that it will be in the, this first phase because when you establish the cashless uh, initiative, then you know it will speed uh, further the uh, e-commerce uh, activities. And the second phase is from 2023 to 2025, to lead an inclusive digital transformation, then we can see once we have all this uh, uh, foundation, then the, the businesses then it can you know, uh, speed up. And the third phase is we aim to become original producer in digital products and solutions. Uh, we did identify a few uh, niche in, in terms of cybersecurity, in terms of uh, solution uh, providers, and also maybe in animation. Uh, but you know, uh, it will the the process of one of the strategies that will support this uh, will be highlighted in the 12 measure plan. Uh, we have quite a lot of uh, initiatives, uh, even in the government. I think uh, in terms of foundation, that means the uh, we need to have uh, the government also to provide end-to-end -end services. Uh, when we want to have a kind of, like say, uh, a better e-commerce environment, we also have to do uh, have the not only data sharing but also cross border uh, i mean cross border uh, uh, to harmonize i think to harmonize the rules and regulation uh, for cross border transactions and i think it, it will include tax and all that and also on in terms of standards uh, because when when uh, like mr siba was saying that when we this is at agenda at asean level even asean want to become a leader in digital. So uh, at, at the ASEAN level, it's not only connectivity. We talk about um, fiscal, I mean, incentives and in terms of uh, standards, I mean, when we, we embark on this uh, digital uh, economy, there are certain things that we need to uh, follow the, the international standards. Uh, but basically, what I'm saying is that in Malaysia, uh, the policy planning is aligned. So we, we don't... Uh, when, because we want to achieve the same uh, objective. So basically, I mean, if you can see the, at the end, the visions, the goals, it, it's not, um, it's kind of quite uh, similar. Uh, in, the, in the vision uh, for the blueprint, we say inclusive, responsible, and sustainable socioeconomic development. Uh, for 12 pen, we have something uh, dif a bit different wording, but uh, similar. It's the end, socioeconomic development, uh, sustainable development, you know, in terms of environment and prosperous. That means you want to be uh, the growth in um, 
to be a higher income nation. Uh, so basically, uh, the aim is still the same, but how we would it, uh, uh, how it complements, it will depends on the faces that we already set. And uh, for the uh, 12 plan, I think we were going to, hopefully we can launch it soon because uh, actually the, the 12 plan should come sooner, right? So then you can see the mapping, but because uh, the 12 plan will only be launched a bit later, then it be, sometimes I think uh, people cannot see how it, it kind of complements. But once uh, we, we launch the 12 plan, I think we, people can see how the 12 plan will complement better the blueprint. Uh, in terms of um, engagement, uh, I just want to highlight on that because in any policy formulation or planning, th there is quite an extensive engagement. Uh, right, uh, Stephen was uh, saying just now, you know, we engage the um, uh, ministries, agencies, industry players, NGOs, SESOs. Uh, during the planning, we engage a lot. And even so, uh, when we uh, when we launch after this and on the implementation, there will be quite a lot of uh, engagement because it is and it should be agile and it should be, uh, we want to speed the implementation. Uh, one of the important, I think vital uh, uh, milestone when we have the when, we, when the government uh, established the national digital economy and for our council, because before this, this everybody is the player, everybody, uh, each minister is doing something, but under this concern, everything is being uh, governed, you know, uh, so through the six clusters, then we, we it's more coordinated. So there's uh, each, each, uh, like for talent, the Ministry of uh, Human Resource is uh, kind of leading it. So. The, the efforts is uh, more aligned and more coordinated. And one of the important, uh, I think, important thing that we, we kind of established also is on the definition. Because internationally, there's quite a lot of definition on this uh, digital economy. But, you know, to, to track things better, we, we come up with a, a definition that digital economy is the economy and social activities that involve the production and use of digital uh, technology by individuals, business, and government. So we can see it uh, because before this, we have only the ICT satellite in which it might be, you know, uh, underrepresented. So with this uh, kind of uh, this definition that, you know, uh, things are more coordinated. Uh, those, even the blueprint is, uh, we, I mean, we, we can see that there are things that we need to refine better because uh, in terms of talent, we just see broadly that, okay, we need to uh, kind of uh, train like 50,000 professionals, but we are we not uh, have not yet to define in which area, in which, uh, in which sector. Uh, as we as we move, I mean, because the, the time is 10, uh, for, uh, 10 years. So maybe in the 12th plan, we just say that we need to further, you know, uh, train on cybersecurity and all that. But as we move to a certain plan, then we can, maybe we already, by then we already know by clearly in which under the MISCO uh, code, uh, which areas, you know? So uh, this is a refinement. When we move is a refinement towards, but we, when we start with blueprint and we complement with the 12 nation plan and towards the end, uh, you know, everything is 12, 10 years plan. And then in the end is a, will be a high income, sustainable and, uh, you know, uh, with a uh, prosperous uh, Malaysia. I right. think basically that's how the policy connects, uh, Raymond. I think you, you put it really, really clearly for us to understand this, uh, uh, how the policy is all coming together. I mean, that's really important that the end objective is harmonized between the different policies and the plan. And we iterate as we go along, as you said, RMK 12, uh, you know, perhaps could have come a bit sooner, but it's there. And, and you know all this led us up to the same thing, so we can see it in the next couple years. Steven, I need to, to ask you this, uh, based on what Dr. Su has said and also what Tuan Siva has said earlier on. Uh, what are we doing to ensure that no one is left behind? Because you know we we, we talk about digital, we have these plans, but the reality could be uh, that that maybe the connectivity is not quite ubiquitous. We're working on it. The reality yeah. could be there's not much devices and access to devices, and we're working on it. Okay. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, the simple answer to you is engagement, engagement, engagement. But then uh, there are other things that we, uh, for example, uh, just taking a leap from what uh, Dr. Dr. Suhana has mentioned, one example, the devices, uh, you know, for the B40. 
you, you know, there, there is an initiative under the blueprint that, that actually, you know, allows us, I mean, provides for devices for students that are underprivileged, mm -hmm. right? If you look at that blueprint, it only captures the ones uh, initiatives under the government. And uh, what we did is we realized that there are a lot of initiatives here and there. For example, the state government are providing uh, recently, last week, I think, Joho announced that uh, they provide 8,000 devices to the students. And then uh, we also know that there are some civil society going out around collecting all these uh, used laptops and get somebody to refurbish them at certain cost and then, uh, you know, do that. So what we did was we contacted all these groups, you know, and, and tell them, do share with us your target, uh, uh, what they call it, target recipients. And we will actually now bring in MOE in and say, look, you know, we need to synchronize all this. We need to actually, uh, you know, count all this because to me, it's not just the one that is uh, undertaken by the government. This is a national blueprint. Hence, all activities carried out by whether it's the people, the private sector or the state government should be counted. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is one good example, you know, on how we actually scan around and see, okay, uh, there are existing initiatives that need to be included, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. So that uh, the numbers add, add up and then we make sure there's no double dipping, there's no overlapping uh, thing and we maximize uh, the efforts from the various quarters. Uh, this is what we do, okay? Uh, and, and engagement with the, the various groups actually help us realize that there are actually a lot of uh, initiatives in, uh, you know, pockets of uh, initiative here and there, and we need to actually uh, so-called mainstream them and then make sure that they are counted and make sure that all these are better coordinated because otherwise, you know, it's like short scenery, like everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's one that's one approach like, that we, we, we take, you know, yeah. Right, uh, Mr. Siva, I, I need to go back to you. Based, based on that conversation early on where we're trying to push access in, you know, get the collective, you know, Malaysians in. And even in my earlier session, we looked at that where Malaysians are helping uh, Malaysians in. But, you know, on, on, the, on the bigger picture, as we talk about digitalization and adoption of digital in society, we also need the foreign direct investments to come in. And we see that, that ASEAN as a region has attracted really, you know, there's a recent surge of investments. Like. We see that very clear. Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, including Malaysia, uh, we're, we're getting the investments in, right? Uh, manufacturing may be a bit slow, but digital has gone up, right? And, and so the e-commerce sector specifically uh, has gone up, right? Access to mobile devices has means now I can go online, I can buy anything I want, sell anything I want uh, here. But also there are also barriers to entry and each country is trying to protect their turf, so to speak, la. you know, this is why there's a slow regulatory reform. Perhaps also the lack of understanding on how to do that you know, the regulatory reform, right? Extensive bureaucracy, lack of government incentives. So, you know, in, in various parts of the region, you know, it, it could curtail this potential of e-commerce. From your point of view, uh, Mr. Siva and KKMM, how are we addressing some of the pain points around e-commerce? Because I think that's the tip of the spear to get people into digital adoption. Uh, <clears throat> So I think uh, in terms of attracting investment, uh, we, are, we, are, we have successfully laid some foundation as, as in the past, uh, we are one of the most uh, desired destination for investment. Of course, there is a, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, distraction in the last couple of years where we had this pandemic coming in, uh, you know, but, but uh, it's gaining momentum again uh, as far as, you know, digital uh, economy investments really, really uh, are concerned. So, uh, for example, uh, the, the focus of attracting investment and enable formation of digital ecosystem are like uh, putting in place uh, digital infrastructure, uh, such as connectivity, cloud and 5G, uh, market opportunities to sell products and services, availability of local talents and ability to bring in foreign talent, uh, which is an avenue to raise alternative financing beyond bank-backed uh, financing, such as uh, venture capital matching program as in announced in Dana Penjana initiative. Uh, so we are we are setting the, the the stage right for investors to come in. Uh, besides that, uh, I think my digital addresses all these needs to build uh, enabling uh, digital ecosystem. Uh, that's a very important thing, and 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 we see that, uh, for example, under the uh, national e-commerce strategic roadmap, for example. Uh, we have more than, uh, I'll say, close to uh, 500,000 MS 
MSMEs uh, have adopted e-commerce. Uh, so they are already in the game uh, where uh, about 400,000, I'm just putting a rough figure, it could be within 380 to 400 plus, uh, thousand of uh, SMEs uh, already trade in e-commerce uh, by end of 2020. And, and, and this year, if you notice that we have escalated the process uh, by uh, enabling uh, the training centers and whatnot uh, through uh, Pusat, Internet, Pusat Internet community and whatnot to get more SMEs on board to, to uh, adopt uh, the uh, e-commerce and so on. So uh, when we have that uh, community of uh, uh, e-commerce community here, it, 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 part, it, it, it proves that government is serious about it and, and uh, we see that uh, the investors who are coming in would potentially see the market here ready. And besides that, uh, uh, well, well uh, there were challenges, uh, just to give some uh, figures to this. Well, the, the challenges uh, which I spoke about earlier about external economic conditions. Uh, exports expected to jump uh, to 11.2% in 2021, uh, significant rebound from the minus 8.9% seen in 2020 as a global demand stabilizes and investment in export-related activities continue to improve. Uh, I think Malaysia uh, is studying its digital economy from a, a relative point of strength with a strong electronic uh, manufacturing base, uh, multilingual skill and uh, uh, skill uh, talent pool, uh, together with low cost of living and relatively high internet penetration. So on top of that, I think uh, addressing some of the concerns that you, you raised about the barriers uh, for investment, for example, uh, the incentives. I think Malaysia is one of the uh, uh, one of the country that offers a significant amount of incentive uh, to investors, uh, which I believe sometimes it confuses them more than uh, facilitates them. So uh, it, it's all there. Uh, it, it's just that uh, currently, as you're also aware, that uh, MOF is undertaking a, a scheme of uh, rationalizing all these incentives to make sure that the right incentive is given, especially in terms of tax incentive for the digital investors as well. Uh, on top of that, I think uh, the concern is also about those uh, startups and uh, uh, those onboarding uh, into an e-commerce business. Uh, I think this is something that we will work with MOF uh, in the coming uh, budget 20, 2022 mm -hmm. uh, to put in place some form of uh, incentive uh, to further uh, encourage them to participate in this e-commerce business. Uh, probably in terms of a waiver of uh, uh, tax for the for the startup years probably for three years or so on, which we have done in the past where you know uh, SMEs uh, starting up their business were given a three year waiver with a rebate of up to twenty thousand, uh, which is quite significant in that sense. So this is something we'd like to propose again to MOF, uh, specifically tailor made for uh, e commerce business to ensure that there is more adop adoption into a uh, e commerce business. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I think uh, as as Dr. Suhana mentioned earlier that that about the the uh, uh, changes that we are doing uh, within the regulatory uh, uh, environment, which includes uh, standards, consumer protection, I think is one of the important things, as well as uh, uh, other related uh, regulatory environment. Uh, of course, uh, as, as you may know, there are, there are certain licensing regime, uh, which is not favored by uh, investors. So uh, in KKMM, we are working uh, tirelessly to ensure that we try to minimize these barriers to ensure that there is a smooth movement of uh, uh, investment into Malaysia and, and, we, and, and, and as an investor friendly country as we have always been uh, to ensure that you know uh, the investments are protected here that we, we facilitate their investment and to ensure that you know uh, there is a very uh, a friendly environment for investors to, to put in their money. Uh, besides that I think uh, th there are also uh, non-tax incentives that we can put in place and they're already in place to, to attract these investments uh, I think one, there are special grants that we are giving to some potential high impact investors, uh, which is uh, something that we can negotiate with the investors uh, under the uh, special investment uh, uh, grants. And uh, there's also, uh, of course, uh, facilitation by MDAC itself. And the setting up of a digital investment office, I think is a great milestone uh, to put Malaysia uh, in the forefront as a single point of contact with our digital investment office to attract these FDIs. I think in the past, as you, you, you rightly mentioned, there was some bureaucracy involved and so on, which delays the uh, decision-making process. And I think uh, under the new, new commitment that uh, we have given under the uh, DIO arrangement, a company coming to Malaysia can get their approval done uh, within 14 days 
uh, if that's with it, without the incentives uh, and 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 if it is with incentives, I think uh, the, the maximum number of days to be approved and for them to uh, kickstart their business is within thirty days. I think which is uh, which we need to promote this uh, more uh, and and bring this out the news out to the world so that they know how efficient we have become. Uh, I think that there was a, a concern in the past that there is a lot of delay and uh, bureaucracy in the decision-making process to attract investors. I think we have done the right thing by setting up the DIO, but there's more publicity uh, need to be done on this part. Uh, I think uh, I, I've covered uh, a bit on that and, and uh, I'll give the floor back to you. Thank you, Sisiva. I, I agree with you that uh, DIO needs uh, a lot more uh, fire uh, you know, to push it out there, not to burn it down, but to really, you know, get it out there. Uh, but Dr. Su, I want to come back to you based on what uh, Tuan Siva has just said just now. So as we, I, I can see the energy within the government space here. All of us are, are looking forward to really push this country forward to become a leading digital nation. Uh, from your point of view, though, uh, Dr. Su, what is the rate of participation from the private sector when it comes to the initiatives? Because, you know, the model is still, I believe, uh, the way forward. Uh, what is EPU or your view on this? Mm. You asked me the rate, I'm not sure <laughs> or the rate. But we can see that um, if, we, if we look at contributions to GDP, uh, I think 2019, 2020, uh, the rate, uh, the contribution of the digital economy to the GDP is around uh, 19%. Uh, we, as, we are estimating that through the blueprint is around 22.6, but uh, to plan, I think we're coming out a new figure that it will be higher. Uh, with the hype and the, I think because lots of things have been uh, on, I mean, being, uh, I mean, everybody is uh, supporting this uh, e-commerce and then we have the uh, better ecosystem. So quite a lot of uh, people are already on board to uh, adopt the digitalization. Even we said that uh, we target that about more than 800,000 MSMEs will uh, adopt uh, digitalization. The recent study by OECD, they found out that uh, for MSMEs, uh, the older MSMEs, I know, I mean, they are of uh, kind of older age, they are not uh, have yet to adopt a digitalization. But we believe that uh, there's also a study that says that if a company do not move towards uh, e-commerce or to adopt digitalization, they might not. Uh, uh, they, some of it uh, uh, cannot be able to sustain their production and all that. So the, uh, we can see that there's a really a need. I say it's not a, it's not a, an option anymore. There's a need to move because uh, when the pandemic uh, happens last year, we need uh, we know that uh, is the I mean the, the shift from the brick and mortar shops towards the online. So by hook or by crook, you have to have uh, an online presence so that you can sustain. Uh, this will, um, this is not easy because some uh, some companies or for MSMEs, it's not something that they can easily understand or they can easily adopt. And the cost of adopting is also, it's not cheap. And for the, maybe the smaller, uh, on the smaller MSMEs uh, or the micros, it is a bit more difficult to adopt. I, th I think under KKMM, they have uh, come up with the, to enhance further the uh, Pusa internet community so that you know, uh, they can give some sort of a hand-holding type you know, uh, to the, for the uh, small uh, SMEs to, to on board. So that is to that level. So we have, I think in, in Malaysia, we have very at the low end at the, and then quite a lot of people are doing well on their own. Um, but basically, we can see that there's, um, uh, we, we need to address or we need to support those at different levels. Mm -hmm. MSMEs have different levels. Even the big uh, companies also have different levels of adoption. Even the banks also, I think we have complaints that banks are still, uh, you know, uh, I mean, still having, you know, you have, still have to give your thumbprints even though you have that machine. No? So there's a certain processes that still have not, uh, end to end, you know, uh, for the government, uh, we said that it's, you need to to have an end to end services because uh, you cannot have any uh, the one at the end of it that the people have to come to the like whatever uh, organization and still have to hand in the the, the forms. So it should be everything in, uh, end to end. As for the uh, businesses, we said okay, you need to uh, be on board. 
you need to adopt e-commerce, you need to have, uh, you know, you need to reskill your, your workers and all that. But we do understand in creating those ecosystems, these companies also need help. And uh, maybe I think uh, because uh, when we have that, uh, you know, we have international investment or for e-commerce, then we can also, uh, some of these, uh, these companies might, you know, uh, move faster. Um, I think this uh, what um, the efforts by MDEC to look at the MSC uh, incentives and the, the new value proposition is very good uh, because now it's not only on tax, on, on fiscal, but also non-fiscal. There's quite a lot of people that, you know, they need other things besides uh, financial or incentives. So in terms of investment, uh, I think this is we are moving uh, with the DIO, we're moving on the right direction. Uh, just that, that uh, how that we can help for the, uh, the MSMEs to kind of uh, go uh, beyond the export market and all that. Uh, there are, uh, we have a discussion with the uh, one industry last week, and most of them saying that how that the government can help them to export their products. Uh, we thought that, uh, you know, we are, they are being big companies that they are able to do that, but you no, know, we're talking to them they also feel that they need because uh, it's difficult if they want to go alone. So it's uh, both ways that we, at the moment, we, we welcome the investment because we want to go further. But towards the end, uh, what we want is that we are the one who export our talent, our products, and, uh, uh, and then uh, any cl collaboration uh, to also help the other countries. Um, now, I think we, we welcome certain countries that, you know, uh, uh, in terms of knowledge sharing, transfer of information, innovation, and uh, from other countries, they also uh, uh, kind of. Uh, I mean, there are few that uh, we have received uh, from uh, international, uh, from Korea or Japan that you know are interested to uh, offer uh, some sort of a transfer of knowledge. Um, it is uh, it's good good for ours, our our companies, I think, but. Uh, Towards the end, I think like the aim of the vision of our blueprint is that at the end, we also be the one who are going to transfer the knowledge outside. And in doing so, through the 4R, we, we need to become the creator. Uh, we, now, at the moment, we are just at the top, you know, we just use. Towards the end, I, I think if you uh, can, I can relate to theory of convergence, that means you need to have to create the innovation so that you have the competitive advantage. Okay. This is where that we want to move. Uh, with the blueprint and also for the video for our technology because technology will keep on moving you know by the maybe by the end of uh, 10 plan it's no more for are already like 10 for a uh, 10 industrial revolution so maybe uh, during that time we have another another uh, blueprint you know maybe it doesn't call it digital anymore maybe you have another name but the 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 back of that back is that the technology all this uh, digital, all these four are the, the main component, the enabler is the technology. Then this is where uh, I think for Malaysia, we still need to um, to kind of create that awareness that we need to adopt, adapt, embrace all that. Uh, and then if we can create, it will be created faster Then we will have that, uh, uh, we call say the competitive advantage. Uh, basically what I can see is that uh, the private sector, if they can, uh, go beyond, they, they can become a creator, innovator. Then instead of like we are targeting about 20 plus uh, contribution of uh, digital economy to the uh, to the GDP, maybe it can become higher. Uh, because we, this is a kind of a new sources of economy, right? So like if everybody you know, uh, contribute more than, than what, we, because the way we estimate it's just a, uh, it's not a very ambitious estimate. Uh, we feel that uh, uh, when, when it things move faster, we can get higher uh, contributions to GDP. And if that uh, happens, I think this uh, the the speed of work effects will be very high to other other yeah. subsectors as well. Because when you, you know, digitize, it, it does not affect uh, one sector across many sectors. Absolutely I think if uh, if you uh, you ask me regarding the. Uh, the uh, contributions or the role of the private sector, this is where they can play and to kind of contribute towards the uh, growth of uh, the digital economy in Malaysia. Fantastic. Fabian, 
you know, just to take off of that, Dr. Sue, I think and this is a question actually coming in. Yeah? We've got a couple of questions coming in already. Um, yeah. So as we take on, you know, the private sector and your, your engagements with the private sector, and you finished, uh, you know, a couple of engagement with engagement day as well. The youth, right. uh, a question has come in and say, can you give me an example of a PPP in addressing the social economic development that's being uh, led by uh, the SAMO? Uh, is there an example that we're working together? Uh, okay, they, put it this way. Uh, there are a few proposals coming on, uh, coming in from uh, some big names. I can't unveil them yet because uh, I'm bound by the, uh, you know, uh, NDA and all that. But I can assure you, actually, there is one that's quite huge that looks at, uh, you know, uh, attracting talents as well as it looks at uh, urban development. It looks at uh, exporting our knowledge all in one package. Mm. Yeah. I, I can I can I can say that uh, just wait for a couple more months before they are ready to to to, to actually unveil themselves. Uh, but uh, but there are a few that okay. For example, even the the I go back to the story about the de devices. There are actually uh, a few proposals that come and say like, look, you know, um, uh, why don't we 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 do this for you? Uh, we get a telcos to fund uh, you know to fund the refurbishment and then uh, you know. And uh, what do you call it? And distribute, and then we exchange the uh, information database together with MOE so that all are aligned. But you see, all these ideas we need to coordinate them because, uh, as far as I know, uh, correct me, I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Siva. MCMC actually is in the works. Uh, is in uh, what do you call it? Uh, has a plan to do this as well. So we want to make sure that they, they also don't overlap. There are a few, you know, ideas that come up, but you know. Uh, we do want to ensure that it is properly, uh, what they call it, uh, organized so that we don't overlap. If if MCMC is already doing it, you know, why not let them champion it and then work together with whoever that's providing that that uh, proposal. So uh, question here, Fabian, and I think it's important before I go back to Jessica is, you know, that's so right. we talk about uh, the the current e-commerce landscape and also the procurement landscape, right? So we're looking at a B two C approach, right? Getting yeah. our guys look at the quote but you know the truth is our consumer market is what it is the size is not quite there yet and that's why yes. we keep going to indonesia going to look at asean as a, as a as a big market but then there's also a b2b big B2B. yes right and, and yeah. you know a, a lot of times we hear our tech companies coming to us and saying Apa lah, ini procurement process you know can we can we look at you know getting our local companies uh, yeah. It's like now we, we know the rules, we know the OECD rules, we know we know the other rules, you cannot champion this, but mm -hmm. what can we do to encourage a B2B play so that we don't have to go outside so much? I mean, we've got such great talents and products and services. I guess we need to uh, elevate them to a platform where, you know, they are visible because we know there are B2B players here. Uh, one good example, Dropy, hmm. right? But hmm. then people don't talk about it. People mostly talk about Shopee. I mean, Shopee is more recognizable than Shopee, for example, because the, the focus has always been B2C, B2C, you know, uh, when you talk about e-commerce, it's always B2C. So I guess number one is awareness first, you know, awareness and also providing that a platform to say, okay, look, you know, uh, this is where you can come together. And then of course the awareness is not only, not only uh, the consumers out there, not only the players, policy makers as well. Because uh, I know uh, Raymond, you're part of this discussion. We uh, before when we uh, when we had a discussion on uh, uh, you know uh, the DIO, uh, there is that uh, statement that you know uh, when we talk about talent, not only the the, the future talents or the students or uh, TVS, but we also need to educate the you know those who are in policy making as well. Yeah. So I guess uh, that is one step as well. That we, yeah. we need to, yeah, we also need to, you know, uh, look at, you know. And uh, can I add a bit about the, uh, earlier on, we were talking about the, the tr cross-border trade and how do you, uh, 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 when the one that uh, Mr. Siva was commenting, I think one of the things that we, we, we probably uh, need to also uh, look at seriously are uh, the digital econo economy agreements, you know, like, for example, the Onever in the South. You, mm. They already have a digital, you know, economy partnership agreement with Chile, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's also the uh, 
I think Australia, South Korea, sorry, South Korea, they're also negotiating with, I think, uh, Australia as well. So these are the things probably we want to explore and see because these kind of agreements establish the rules and standards, you know, for cross-border trade. So it's also quite important for us to be, you know, to be looking at this, yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's a good point to come back to you then, you know, um, th this is really needed. So when we talk about B2B and B2C, we're also talking about how can Malaysia achieve a high value add economy, right? And really, you know, while we're doing that, how do we create global champions? How do we become a next export, a net exporter, you know, of homegrown technologies, right? And, and, and digital solutions, because we have the talent and the skills, right? Let's see what your views, please. Okay, I, I think uh, much of uh, this has been already uh, addressed earlier by Dr. Swana, Dr. Dr. Swana. Uh, but uh, I think how we drive this to become a value added, to, to create more value added companies or uh, become a net exporter of homegrown technologies is, is, is partly also uh, skewing the uh, government policies towards this, how we can support uh, these uh, companies to become uh, higher value added companies and, and, and net exporters. Uh, targeting uh, towards a more uh, export-oriented uh, kind of uh, support system, incentives, and so on. Uh, so if you know, traditionally, uh, we, we were uh, mainly focusing on uh, manufacturing sector, and, and that's how we made Malaysia become a, a major net exporter in a way. Uh, so now coming to digital economy is the same thing, how we skew our uh, public policies, uh, in, especially like in terms of uh, uh, giving incentives, uh, support system and all that, where more incentives could be given to uh, those uh, uh, in the export uh, regime. Uh, on top of that, I think uh, there are certain areas that we can give a focus on where we have the niche, uh, you know, uh, where we already have a niche, probably in the area of uh, cybersecurity and so on. Uh, instead of going uh, all over and trying to find that niche, uh, we target a couple of areas that we have expertise and so on, and, and we really push that. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, government support and whatnot, and also uh, to, to bring together on board all the private sector players uh, in a more collaborative manner, uh, not individually, but where, where, where they can create, create a platform for them to work together and bring out this to the uh, international market and so on. I think the collaboration is very important here uh, rather than, you know, we, we leave it to uh, individual companies and whatnot. Uh, as we are a small economy, I think uh, when, when we talk about uh, becoming a, a, a net exporter of homegrown technologies. Uh, there could be collaboration between, uh, you know, institutions, businesses, and so on uh, to drive this, uh, Raymond. Thank you so much. We've got, uh, you know, other questions coming in, but, you know, in the interest of time and, and not wanting to delay the other session as well, uh, it has been a fascinating discussion. Uh, I think I've not learned so much in this one hour yet to have all three of you in one stage, you know, and, and really questions are coming in and I want to share that out uh, as we go in later. So on this note, I, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Jen Siva, for your time. I know it's going to be a busy time at the ministry today after 2.30 swearing in of the cabinet ministers, uh, Dr. Dr. Suhana. Thank you so much again. Your minister is coming back. So Senang Sikit, uh, maybe the same with you as well. But I think the most important thing for all of us here is tomorrow is Merdeka. You know, uh, it, it's, it's Independence Day for us. Uh, and I think what, what we all uh, understood from these 30 days is that the amount of talent that we have in this country, the passion and commitment to the digital technology service uh, and, and products that we want to produce, and the policy and regulations that we, that we have uh, to make Malaysia a digital nation is really, uh, 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 you know, something to be really proud of. Uh, I want to say as well, there are some elephants in the room, exemption to the cabotage policy, trusted data zone, uh, and, and other issues. Uh, and I want to call it out because this is the truth. Uh, and we are, uh, uh, I think I have the, the understanding here, and I've spoken to all of you at one point or another, that we are addressing some of these tough issues as a country. Uh, and more importantly is that we will move forward to address these issues uh, as they come by. On that note, uh, again, thank you so much, Jessica, uh, Dr. Dr. Sue, Fabian. Um, have a great day ahead. Uh, it's going to be a good day for us and a great Merdeka tomorrow. Uh, please stay safe. And um, to all Malaysians out there, I'm handing over the floor back to my good buddy, Hasrul, as we close Malaysia Tech Month today with a speech by Puan Surina Shukri the CEO of MDEC and also the Dato Sri, 
uh, KSU, uh, Mr. Mantik, to, to give his closing speech right after that. Please stay on with us and, and, and look at the speeches here, the speech. Thank you again and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond, and to all the distinguished panel members for the encompassing discussion of my digital the initiatives for digital investments from now up to the year 2030. What a better lineup to close the Malaysia Tech Month to drive Malaysia to be the heart of digital Asia. Thank you. We will now be moving forward to our next session of the day. It will begin very shortly, so do click join session and also complete the survey after each session for us to continuously serve you better. See you in a few minutes.